Hello and welcome to another 2D Sunday-ish. Today we're going to talk about um, Namco's alternative to Shinobi, which is the Rolling Thunder arcade games 1 and 2. It took heavy inspiration from the Sean Connery, um, James Bond movies, the Spy game, sorry, the Spy movies. Um, I didn't really play Rolling Thunder games. I more played Sly Spy Secret Agent, made by Data East. So yeah, let's get into talking about Rolling Thunder 1 and 2. Rolling Thunder was developed and published by Nemco in 1986 um, in the arcade using their Nemco System 86 hardware. And it was, odd enough, it was distributed in North America by Atari. Huh. Go figure. So we're going to take um, control of uh, the character or the secret agent called Albatross who is a member of the WCPO's World Crime Police Organization to rescue our partner that's been kidnapped by their terrorist organization. Basically, as you can see here, you've got to go into certain doors that are marked by bullets, as you see there, to resupply your ammo count. You do not want to get down to zero bullets, otherwise you can only shoot one shot on screen at a time. Um, there are power-ups. You go into other rooms, as you can see here, with the arrow. And I get machine gun bullets and then you can use them and then once those finish you go back to your standard um, gun which has just got your normal bullets in there so let's compare this Rolling Thunder game to Shinobi um, realistically Shinobi copied Rolling Thunder as it came out a full year ahead of Shinobi and Shinobi made some decent improvements so um, you've got lower and higher levels it's the same inputs for both when you want to get to a high level you just hold up and press jump um, you can duck down behind uh, certain objects so you don't get hit by oncoming projectiles or enemies um, you can semi bounce on an enemy because you have a life bar sometimes it's a bit janky doesn't really work uh, unlike Shinobi you can run out of ammo what else is different? Oh, you do not have any bosses in this game. It's just stages. The I would say the movement in Rolling Thunder 1, it feels like it's rotoscoped. I don't believe it is, but it just feels like it is. So therefore, once you say, for example, you're going to duck and you think, oh, no, I want to do a jump instead. You have to finish that ducking animation first before you can move. When you're crouching, I found it very hard just to turn around when I was crouching. I don't think that was possible in the first game, which was annoying. Um, yeah. The, the stairs mechanics, as you can see here, great animation for stairs, but um, you can't do anything on them. So I found that it's just better to jump instead. So yeah, that's, that's why I believe that it's some form of rotoscoping. And here you can see, look, I died there. So if I get back to that point again, it's just better gameplay wise if you just start jumping and missing the stairs. And I should be doing it round about here, there you go. So yeah, jumping is a better way to go rather than getting caught on, on stairs there. Obviously, since there are no boss battles, that means um, unlike Shinobi, there are no bonus stages. But once you do complete a stage in Rolling Thunder, you get a picture of a cutscene um, showing what's happening to your partner uh, and those do change as you progress through the game. Oh, that arrow there was just to show that um, if you get stuck on um, the, the layers there. Uh, it's a bit strange here because even though the stairs you would think are the same layer as the floor, they act completely different. You know, I think they took that a bit too far, but once again, that's one thing that Shinobi sort of straightened out. It had a hard and fast rule. Look at those blue ninjas there. The only time you really gonna see ninjas in this game. Okay, now I'm just gonna give my thoughts and opinions on the Rolling Thunder and a, a tiny, tiny bit about my history because I didn't really play this game. Like I said, for me, it was more uh, Sly Spy Secret Agent by Data East rather than Rolling Thunder. Um, I do actually like the graphics of Rolling Thunder. I have to say that the enemy variety isn't that wide, but hey, it came out in 1986. 
and for a game that came in 986 i think this looks really really good um i love the animation it's it hinders the gameplay but it's still really nice um most of the enemies are what color swaps um you get some decent design there some of the levels i find a little bit too cheap for me um certain parts but hey it was an arcade game and it was designed to take your money uh, the main character looks cool um, and I suppose if you don't have ninjas the next best thing at this point was to be a spy so I can understand that really but hey you're never going to beat ninjas ninjas are always going to be the one to pick but yeah um, there was a decent variety in stages which again was surprising I like the fact that you had a life bar it wasn't one hit death um, the music was was good I think it's, um, it's very well done especially for the time period so yeah uh, I didn't find it too hard even at the time when I was playing it simply because it wasn't a one hit death so I did appreciate that at the time but to be honest I probably played this game like seven times tops so yeah I think it's a really good um, first try and I'm glad that they made it right so the sequel to Rolling Thunder was called Rolling Thunder 2. Um, nothing fancy there. Uh, it was, when was it done? It was uh, developed and released by Namco once again, on this time on the Namco System 2 hardware, and it's released in 1991. And instead of being set in like the, 19, the late 1960s, this one's a bit more futuristic. I don't know when it's set, but it's definitely not set in the same time period. So, yeah. In the single player mode, you are now uh, the default character is the woman who you rescued in the first game this game is two player co-op which is really good and you can be both agents now um, I've never played it in two player to be honest I've only ever played this game once in the arcade um, I knew it was it did get a conversion to the Mega Drive uh, when was that conversion done I think it was probably the same year I think 1991 it came out yeah but um like I said, I've only ever played the arcade and very, I think, maybe, I only can remember once. That's all I can remember. Um, it wasn't something that I went out my way to play. Uh, I don't know why, but I, it just wasn't. The general mechanics of the game are the same as the first one. Um, I feel that the game plays better. The animation is definitely not well to sculpt if the first one was. Um, it feels precise and responsive now. Um, so I like that if you're crouching you can turn around it just feels better to play and less wonky okay um, just like Rolling Thunder 1 I'm going to continue my comparison with uh, Shinobi in fact I'm going to use Shadow Dancer as well because this came, game came out in 91 um, I don't think they were too influenced by Shadow Dancer and Shinobi this seems to be more of a continuation, like a proper sequel from their last game and improvements on it. Um, they still got the same things that as you can see here. You go in there, you get extra ammo. Um, when you run out of ammo, it's not quite as, as deadly as the first game. It's still a huge hindrance though. You just don't want it, but it seems to be, I don't know, the ammo just seems to be um, a bit more liberal compared to the first game, but the power-ups are still the same. You go into certain doors and you get this one's a machine gun here as you can see i did find that the the bullets um i didn't think they stood out enough compared to the background um, whereas with shinobi your your shurikens ninja stars whatever you want to call them they easily stood out especially when you had the power ups they were either blue on the mega drive or had gold f uh, sorry um, yellow flames on them on the arcade so this to me it just is I don't know if it's the color selection or the color palette maybe it's a bit too contra not contrasty enough and a bit gearish but the bullets didn't really stand out some of the stages or my bullets didn't really stand out compared to the enemy bullets as well so that was definitely a thing I also don't feel the music is as memorable as any of the music from Shinobi or the two Shadow Dancer games. Um, uh, in fact, I actually prefer the music in the first game. Uh, I think it's just better. 
this one doesn't this one's okay it's literally okay but it doesn't sound like some sort of spy movie or background music does i think from a, a some sort of espionage movie or game it's just it's all right it just does the job but it, it doesn't fit the theme in my opinion other people may disagree but that's just what how i feel about that the sound effects once again are also okay but there's nothing spectacular about the sound effects they're not much of an improvement over the first game but they'll do they're, they're, they're okay I would have liked a lot more parallax scrolling there's just not much going on in the background this is obviously the arcade footage it's not like this is the mega drive and got stuff cut out this is arcade there's just not much parallax or details foreground or background I, I just think it could have had more it could have had more especially for the time it came out in 91 so yeah it's yeah, a decent sequel with regards to graphics and sound but it's not really pushing the envelope also what is strange especially when you compare it to shinobi shadow dancer arcade and shadow dancer um, on the mega drive there are no boss battles in this game um, and therefore also no bonus stages once again another arcade game without boss battles and this this is now 1991 so we're talking what five years after the original um it's just so sh so blah, blah, blah. I'm slurring my words here. It's just so shocking that um, we didn't have any boss battles really in the game. Um, I haven't completed it. There could be one last boss battle at the very end, but it's just it's just odd that we didn't get that. I think that um, that should have been one of the things that was amended, especially if you want to go up against um, a game like Shinobi and the two Shadow Dance games, which have really good boss battles in there plus bonus stages afterwards okay now i'm just going to give my just raw opinions on the game what i liked what could be better what i didn't like um first things first the biggest improvement is a, a clear separation between upper and lower levels it was a bit ambiguous in the first game um especially if you remember early on in the video where it shows you where the stairs were where you had to walk or jump and at the end of the stairs, you're still on a different level compared to the ground. There's none of that mix, mix up with this. It's a clear separation. Um, the graphics, enemy-wise, uh, once again, there's a decent variety, but it's still more color swaps um, than anything else. Some of the enemies do tend to be bullet sponges. There's a lot more of that now. Um, I think the enemy design is, is good. But once again, I still think I prefer the enemy design of the first game. It just, I don't know, it's just, it just, they just look better. And they look more, more ham-fisted and dastardly in a camp way. Whereas these guys, these guys more remind me of like a G.I. Joe Cobra enemies, but done badly. Whereas the first game enemies remind me more of a James Bond dastardly, we're evil because we're wearing masks, didn't you know, type of feel. So yeah, uh, um, the stages are definitely improvement because um, there's no bosses or anything like that. But the stage, the stage variety in Rolling Thunder 2, big improvement only over Rolling Thunder 1, in my opinion. Um, the hit detection is just so much better in Rolling Thunder 2. Um, you've, once again, it's still the life system, but the bounce is much better. Um, you know when you're going to get hit and when you're not going to get hit. Um, like I said, the controls are much snappier. So that's also another massive, massive improvement. Um, along with the stages, the backgrounds are also better and they have parallax, um, which the first game, not, not really, but this game does have more parallax than the first game. Uh, the actual characters themselves, yeah, they're cool. Um, they still look like uh, secret spy agents. Um, as you can see here, I'm running out of bullets. And I was like, what the hell am I supposed to do here? Obviously, I did this part of the stage wrong. And I just got, for want of a better word, I got bum rushed. I just got spanked there. It was just, they were just naughty. And I thought, oh, let me see if I can run away here. But um, yeah, and there's my bullets running down again. 
<laughs> just great but no this game is a big improvement um it's better than Namco's version of uh the equivalent to shinobi uh, the shinobi games are better but i do like this series and i like the fact that they really doubled down on um going with spies and the third game i believe was a mega Drive only release which i've never played anyway i'm out see you in the next one and peace